to improve the microphone quality, but I will need to check it for myself. Uh, and I don't actually, I'm not wearing uh, headphones, I am, but I can't hear anything through them. Uh, I'm in fact using a speaker, so let's see what that does. Uh, the first part of the stream is going to be a little bit ugly, um, so sorry about that. I would like to do something, but I cannot at this uh, instant in time. So now um, I should hear myself. Okay, that was pretty soft. So I'm going to adjust the microphone a little bit. Testing one, two, three. Still wasn't very loud. Hello, Marty's McFly here, I think. Testing one, two, three. Testing three, two, one. Okay, let me try something else here. Sorry about the delay. Okay, how about this? Still very soft. Okay, continuing to try here. I'm going to bring up my volume controller here. And this is recording. Oh well, you know what? This is way too soft. Bring this crank this sucker up. Bring this crank this sucker Okay, testing one, two, three. Bring this crank this sucker Okay, testing one, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Okay, I'm hoping that's going to be good enough. I'm going to feel really bad if it's not. If you are, if there is anyone in the audience, please do let me know if um, if my voice is too loud or too soft. I don't have any idea what I'm doing. Um, actually, I might be able to still. <laughs> They might be able to still... Okay. So, if you can hear me, great. If you can't hear me, if I'm too loud, let me know. Um, yeah. Hopefully I'm not overwhelmingly loud. Let me turn off the microphone briefly and we'll... Uh, See if that's the case. One, two, three. One, two, three. All right. Unless someone says otherwise, I'm going to have to assume I'm doing okay. I will download this later and look at it. Obviously, if the video, if the audio is broken, it's broken. Um, I don't know what to say about that. I don't think it's broken. I can't hear anything, but that shouldn't have an effect on what I'm uh, saying, what you guys can hear from me. And according to OBS, I am... Uh, broadcasting way too loudly. So let me turn that down a little bit. Okay, how about... Nope, still very loud. Okay, how about to this level now? Let me test see how that works. Yeah, we're never going to start the stream. 
Can you start the stream? Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. Okay, this sounds Testing better. One, two, three. Okay, this sounds Testing. better. And the echo effect you're getting is just because I had my own headphones on, my own speaker on, listening to what I was doing. It does seem now we're at a more reasonable audio input level. All right, I think at this point I'm just going to have to go with it. Um, and no users. Okay. All right, so what we did last time is we uh, created this nice um, program that would tell us when um, Io saw Jupiter eclipsing the sun. So there are several things we can do now to make this a better program. Uh, one of them is we don't have to specify, we don't have to make it specific to uh, IAU Jupiter, sorry, to Jupiter, Io, and, um, and the Sun. I think we can make it generalized to anything. Now, the, the problem here, of course, is this is going to be maybe a hard frame. IAU, a, IAU Jupiter is very specific to Jupiter. IAU Sun is very specific to Sun, and we don't actually use the IAU International Ast Astronomical Union frame for Io the Moon, the, the observer. Uh, but these two things might be bad. So first of all, let's just make sure that I haven't broken anything, which I shouldn't have actually. Uh, go to the shell here. Uh, let's go to um, BC Git Astro, where this is. We'll do a BC pseudo make. Nothing should actually happen here because it's already done. Um, I mean, nothing that's useful to us. BC Obscurations. And very nicely it prints out about, let's see, it's quite a few actually for this year. We don't know how many of them are complete or total transits or, wow, it's a lot of these suckers. So, um, and I think someone estimated one every three days, which, or a hundred per year. So this looks approximately correct. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, okay. So the first thing I'm going to try doing here, um, still in Emacs, everything is in Emacs. I'm going to see if I can replace the, uh, and I'm going to be very careful here and uh, comment out this code. Let's see if I can replace the uh, frame with no, with no frame. It really shouldn't matter because we're not using the rotational properties that much. Um, and let's see if this breaks anything. And it won't when during the um, it won't during the actual compilation because it has no way of knowing. Okay, unfortunately, it looks like, but the associated fixed body frame name is blank. Okay. Um, by the way, um, the spice lib error handling routines are user tailorable, and the only thing I want to do to them is to remove the message saying that they are user tailorable, because it's really, really freaking annoying. Okay, so that did not work, so let's go ahead and restore it the way we know it does work. Uh, so the other question now has to be, uh, can we find the frame of something, uh, the you know, uh, given its uh, name or its NAIF ID? Uh, and if you don't know what these words mean, you probably should watch the previous stream or uh, get a life of some sort. I don't have one, so not an insult. Um, so let me see if there's a way to do that. Of course, other things we can do is we can extend, extend this out to... Um, uh, 501 being, you know, because we don't have to worry about the, the, the frame of the, of the observer, we can change 501 to any observer. In theory, we can even change it to uh, uh, Earth or Uranus or Neptune. Um, on Earth, we will never see Jupiter obscure the sun. There's no transits of Jupiter in the outer planets, Uranus, Neptune we would see transits of Jupiter uh, across the Sun uh, every so often, uh, potentially. Okay, and the other thing we can do, of course, is right now we're printing this out in very horrid, ugly format. Uh, we probably want to print it out in a little bit of a nicer format. Um, so let's, let's right now see, though, if, uh, the thing I'm curious about now is if we can extract a frame from, an, uh, f given the uh, NAIF ID or the name of, of something. So let's take a look here built-in frame IDs, which might be useful. Um, oh, this actually might just return all of the frame IDs that are that are listed, that are available. And I think it might just list them here, actually. Okay, um, maybe not. Um, so that's probably not what we need there, exactly. 
class and class ID to associated frame? Maybe. Let's see what this does. And quick test to make sure I'm still streaming, even though no one's watching. I still like it, man. Oh, I need to get rid of it. No, I don't. Um, oh, hello. Uh, oh, my goodness. Wow. I can't. I don't want to say your names unless you want to uh, chat out here. Uh, I do appreciate you joining me very much. I have missed you guys, actually. Uh, do me a favor and let me know in the chat if my voice is sounding funny or my video is sounding funny, but I'm most worried about the voice right now because I ha was having some microphone issues. Uh, so if my voice is tolerable, let me know. If it's intolerable, let me know. Um, I don't think I can get it to be perfect. Okay, thank you. And uh, Oh, beautiful. Thank you. I love you, people. You sound just fine, and this is life with ENT. I can say it now because you put some stuff in chat, and I'm so glad someone came to check on that because that was the, my main concern. Because I've changed my microphone to do a little bit better. Okay, now I'm going to go back to boring the crap out of you guys, um, because what I'm doing here is I'm basically trying to <laughs> figure out, uh, oh, uh, little heart symbol there. Um, what I'm trying to do is figure out if you were on Jupiter. When would you see lunar eclipses? And that is a question somebody asked here in Stack Exchange. And I'm trying to solve it. I spent about an hour, 15 minutes this morning getting pretty far in the solution. But um, but now we're going to sort of continue with the solution uh, if we can figure out how to. Or we're going to generalize this. So in theory, you could even use this to look at solar eclipses from Earth or from any planet, really, that uh, has a moon big enough to eclipse the sun or even transits and so forth. Uh, very, very general, if if I can figure out how to fix uh, this IAU Jupiter and IAU Sun, if there's an automatic way to get that from the input uh, the input uh, body. And we might just end up using strings for that. But I haven't, uh, haven't, uh, oh, no, no, I, you can't distract me. Please distract me. I, this, this whole, my whole life is a distraction from getting important stuff done. So being distracted from my distraction would be gorgeous. Um, and if you guys are into coding, please, l you know, let me know, make some comments. Um, at one point, I was going to allow people to uh, code with me. Unfortunately, I'm on a VM now, which means I cannot share coding. I might actually be able to do it with Visual Studio, but um, for right now, we're just going to sort of do it this way. All right, so let's go back over here to the list of functions over here. And we're trying to see what the, uh, let's see if this is the thing we need. I don't think it is, actually. I'm given frame class and frame ID. And I don't think this is what we want. It seems sort of like what we want, but not quite. Um, and I've already thought of a, well, okay, uh, would totally understand all the coding. Well, that's fantastic. By the way, I, you're welcome to stick around for the whole stream, um, but if you don't think this is your cup of bag or bag of tea, bag of tea, cup of tea or a uh, bag of something, I don't know. Um, Okay, thank you. Um, let's call him Fred is the name of the... No, not Fred. It's quotation mark Fred, quotation mark, is the name of the friend who might actually enjoy this. Uh, but I thank you for uh, just dropping in. If you want to stay, you're welcome to. Uh, uh, but if this isn't your thing, that's fine too. Okay, so let's go back to see if we can find the, the frame converter. And if we can't, I've got a center SP key ID frame. I don't think this is what we want. This is just going to be the ICRF. Let's see. Oh, um, any object sent is the ID code for which there's a preferred reference frame is the available space so this might be the thing to do um, let's see frame ID code uh, okay good awesome that's that's fantastic please hang out this will put you to sleep uh, so the the chat says uh, has to be going to bed uh, bed in a bit and that is fantastic because this stream will put you to sleep puts me to sleep half the time. Well, not really, because I enjoy this shit. But it'll put most people to sleep, sleep. Okay, I think this might be what we need. Let's go ahead and see if we can look at an example here. Um, and I think the body fixed frame for... Okay, this is actually sort of... Uh, I wish they had some output here. Um, past ref... Preferred reference of the, of the thingy. So let's go ahead and copy this and fill it in with something. And as always, um, we have to, uh, <laughs> I might learn something. Oh, I don't know, I've never learned anything. Um, so let's go ahead and see if we can do that. Uh, let's see, we don't actually need to declare any of this stuff. 
Oh, actually, we, we might. So let's see if we can find it out here. I think this is late enough in the code where we can actually do something uh, useful. Um, okay. So, okay, now it worries me that uh, an object to associate a frame with. Uh, the ID, okay, now I'm, I'm sort of worried. Is the ID code for which there is a preferred? I'm assuming that's the NAFE ID code. Um, and by the way, notice there's only two inputs. The uh, three room, the three li last parameters are actually outputs. Uh, but again, we do it this all in a strange way. Okay, well, um, what's sort of weird here is this would be nice if this were instead of a spice int, it were a spice char star because uh, even though we have numbers everywhere, we're using them as strings, like quote 599, quote 501. And I think there's another function here that maybe um, Set at the very bottom here, link routine CDIFRM C source file. Oh, never mind. That's not what we want. Um, let me take a quick look to see if there's anything else that's a little bit easier. But I think this might be the thing we need. Um, center name to associated frame. This might be what we want. Oh, this is very similar, except here, Buja. I don't know why I said Buja because I pronounced the Y's as J's. Um, but yeah, this is exactly what we need. This is basically the same thing as the function we have quoted. But this one takes a um, um, a string, which is what we're getting on in the argv. So we actually sort of want that. And I'm hoping that um, I'm hoping that this will have the um, the uh, permission that we can use a integer, a string that looks like an integer instead of the name. Because if it doesn't, this isn't going to work. So let's let's see if we can. Uh, can do that over here and and it looks very similar almost identical in fact so let's go ahead and make this call here cnfrmc um, so for right now we just say the preferred frame of Jupiter which is object 599 uh, the length of the frame I think we're gonna allow 32 I don't think we need more than that and then everything else we're getting is gonna be a, an output so we're going to say spice int 01, which is that's a terrible name for output one. Let's just call it uh, x1. Um, and then, well, you know, let's just call it fr code and spice boolean, which is a boolean. They they sort of recreate all of the basic C types uh, to improve them slightly, so they can sort of have more control over them. It's not a huge deal. And now I can't, I actually do have to do, I have to declare an array here because otherwise uh, C doesn't automatically allocate arrays. So we allocate a 32 length array which has indexes from 0 to 31. Okay, so this should be fine. Um, we're going to send in the FR code parameter and send in the FR name parameter which we should actually be able to do just, just, just like this. I'll go ahead and do uh, ampersand in front of it, but I think for strings you can just use the actual name of the string. And we're going to go ahead and do this. And now if this runs, we should be able to do um, let's see. I want to make sure I get these right. Percent D percent string and I'm going to treat the boolean as a, as an integer, which should not be a problem. Okay, and since we're not really interested in anything else right now, we're going to go ahead and do an exit uh, minus one because we want to remind ourselves that we're interrupting um, uh, that we're interrupting the uh, the program, and we're n we have more stuff we were doing. But this is just a test to see if we can get a frame number out of something. Okay, let's go back over here. Yeah, this might not be quite as good as a real shell. Now, let me see if th we got any... Um, oh, no, no, no. It doesn't like me sending the spice. So I think I was what I was saying earlier here is when you send a string as an argument, you can't use the address of the string. You have to use the first element of the string because it's actually an array of characters and fr name is the... Uh, yeah. Blah, 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 blah. I'm just going to go ahead and do this again and see if we get the same error. Because I hate being wrong, like... Oh, beautiful! It made... <laughs> I act like it's a big deal. Let's see if it runs. 
IAU5, very, very nice. Um, so that is exactly the string we needed. That is exa exactly the frame. IAU 599 is the same as IAU Jupiter because Jupiter is object 599 in the NAFE ID scheme. Beautiful. Perfect. Okay, so now, um, well, let's see. Just, I want to make sure this works for the sun, too. I mean, can't imagine that it won't. Um, actually, let me try this. If I put in Jupiter, It'll, it's the same, it's the actually it's the same uh, frame, but it's going to probably print out as IAU Jupiter. Exactly the same thing, and there it is. Um, and I think they just do that by adding IAU to the beginning of whatever you send in, and then look to see if there's a frame with that definition. Um, so, I am tempted... Yeah, I was tempted to just put in names here, but the problem is when we're talking about, like, Jupiter's moons, there is actually an asteroid also called Io, so there might be some confusion. So I'm going to go ahead and use an IDs, which I'm really comfortable with. Okay, so this is good stuff. I'm going to leave this code here as it is. Um, whoa, hello, hello. No, that's fine, that's fine, that's fine. Um, I'm not going to tell you when I'm reading uh, streamers, but it's just a nice little note for my uh, a streamer that I follow. Life with ENT. Follow them. They're fantastic. If this bores you, follow them. They're much more interesting than I am. Uh, of course, watching paint dry is more interesting than I am, but they're more interesting than watching paint dry. So go ahead and do that. Um, uh, okay, now this stuff I can't really, um, I can't really put in any of this stuff. Um, oh, 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 tragedy has occurred for them, and I can't, I'm not going to mention what the, uh, what the tragedy is or what the news is. If you want to figure out what's going on with life with ENT, go visit go visit them. I'd visit them, except uh, I, I don't know if they're streaming right now. Probably not if they're talking to me. Um, but they're fantastic. Uh, and uh, and I'll just uh, prep, I'll give them a little bit of a pep talk here. One of them is a blue-haired girl. Uh, and what's unusual here is it's actually naturally blue hair. It's a very, very weird kind of mermaid thing going on. And the other one is a redhead. And uh, he's not a natural redhead. He actually dyes his hair red. Or I might have that backwards. But either way... Um, and, oh cool, they're on for a bit um, Thursday morning, which uh, oh at one point I actually had a, um, a clock running at the bottom, right, so you could tell exactly what time I was streaming at. Um, but Thursday would be, well, it doesn't matter, I mean, if you don't know where Thursday is, Thursday, November 28th, oh, that's Thanksgiving, actually, in the United States. Um, so go be thankful for them over there. So now we're going to, um, well, let's go ahead and actually decide how we want people to pass parameters. And then we're going to do, we're actually going to read the parameters, which is surprisingly easy, by the way. Um, one of the few things that's actually not too hard. Uh, blue hair girl will be on in the morning, maybe the redhead. And I can tell you just from personal experience, blue haired girl, way cooler than the red haired guy. Red haired guy, pretty cool. But you would think like for a ginger, he'd be like totally crazy or something. And he's not. He's actually a fairly calm ginger. Um, so whatever. Okay, good night. Thank you for visiting. Uh, if there's anyone else here who's actually wanting to me to code some more, uh, no, there isn't, which is good. Okay, thank you very much. I will see you guys soon. Love you um, in a platonic way, or maybe not more than that. I don't know. Uh, later, guys. So um, let's go ahead and define a usage here. So our usage, and I'm using the Perl dollar sign zero, meaning the name of the program, and I think in C it's arg v zero. Um, and we can just make these uh, parameters any direction we want them to be in, but we, we, we need to def decide what that's going to be. Um, so I think we're going to say observer is the first object, occulted object, um, obscured object, and obscure ring object. And again, these could be in any order, really. And now you'll notice that I intentionally used OBS as the first three letters of all three parameters. Partly to really screw with things, I could have just said occulting or whatever. And also uh, partly because OBS is the program I'm using to stream with, and uh, that has nothing to do with anything. So very nicely. Um, and by the way, when we do send in arguments to a C program, uh, as this char star star arg v indicates, they are strings. They are not integers, even if they look like integers. They will always be strings. Okay. So the first thing we want to do here is if argc 
this this has terrible formatting. I don't even know why it's doing this. Wow. It should automatically format all this beautiful stuff. It, it should know how to how let me see if I can get it into this should be C mode already. Yeah. I don't know why it doesn't like that. Okay. So we expect um three arguments and I think that is actually I can check. Because I have that program that I know works. <laughs> and by no I it actually does work sadly. I'm actually pretty confident it works, which is sad. Okay. So let's see. And I of course we want to look at the main subroutine here. And I think yeah, if arg c is not seven, we give a usage message. Uh one, two, three <laughs> units. I love it. One, two, three, four, five, six. Um which would be zero through six, but the count would be seven. So I don't know if there's a way to look at the program name in 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 C. Probably is. I just don't know what it is. Okay. So what we're going to say here is we want um, three arguments, which will be numbered zero, one, and two. And if we don't get what we want, we will blow up. God, seriously. This is either real. Oh, let's try C plus plus. No, wow. This just does not like me. Fine. We will do this. I don't know why why Emacs is. I do not know why Emacs is being like this. I do know that font lock mode will sort of unfix it. In other words, I can now do. I cannot do that. But maybe if I do font log mode again, it'll fix it. And it does not. <coughs> so I'm not exactly sure why it's it's behaving like this. Um, well, now it's... yeah. Okay, let me see if there's something I've done here that might, mm, might be effing with it. No, this is all pretty standard C stuff. Um, okay, I'm going to go into... Um, mode. That's actually kind of weird. I might just end up going to frickin' text mode. I'm just going to go into three spaces mode. Okay, um, usage. Um, I, I kind of want to put that in somewhere, but anyway. And then we just need to say observer obscured object obscuring object. And I think we'll put a new line in there because we will be putting out some other stuff. Um, can I make this white? I think this is actually pretty white as it is. We're going to make it wider so we didn't have like stuff running off the edge of the screen. But I can also fix that by just doing this. My one... I'm just going to do indent one. <laughs> change the in when in doubt, change the indentation. Oh, man. It really doesn't like me. All right, enough of that. Okay, so if we do get our three arguments, uh, they're going to be... Um, the observer, the observer is the only case where we do not actually need the frame uh, because we're treating the observer as a point, which we should not do, uh, and we need to fix that at some point. And I'm going to put it to do here: do not treat observer as a single point. It's actually a, a entire body. I don't know if we can actually do that because um, I haven't seen a routine that handles that. Um, but we will put that in our to-do list. Okay. So what we want now is. Um, you need to basically, here we go, this is how you assign stuff from, um, huh, do I ever have to define what lat is? I don't know if I need to, yes I do, I need to define these things as being uh, char stars. Um, I have no idea if this will work. Uh, let's see, uh, observer, uh, and we probably don't want to just use, we don't, we, well, we could use argv0 and stuff, I swear to God. Alright, we're going to go back to C mode, and if this still doesn't work, I'm going to get annoyed, because I like the little thingy it does there. 
um, the coloration it does there. And then we're going to say spice char. Got to be very careful here because we're looking. This might not actually work. Let me see how I do it in the other, the other thing. I think here I actually just convert them, so I don't have to worry about. Uh, I don't have to worry about uh, whether they're strings or not. Um, so that's. This might be something a little bit new. Okay. Um, I want to see if this actually works. I want to see if it can accept uh, argv0 because there's a there's always this difference between a. Um, there's always this little bit of a difference between um, an, a pointer and a because st uh, the string itself is a pointer, pointer to a character array. So when you're dealing with strings and pointers, it gets a little bit more complicated. But let's see if this works. And if it does, we should be in good shape. And we'll just say observer. And once again, we're going to do an exit minus one here because we're, we're only testing. And that is not what we wanted. We wanted our little shell. And we want to test to see if there is um, if there is a problem here. Invalid initializer, and I was sort of worried about that. Um, uh, that is, in fact, that's exactly what I was worried about. So, gotta be really, really careful here. I think this might work. This actually means we're, it's just a pointer to the uh, zeroth argument. It's not even a copy of it. Um, oh, cool. I can use bang bang. Oh, it looks like that actually, that actually compiled. Um, okay. Oh, haha. -ha. See, I told you I have to give it three arguments now. I'm just going to give it three arguments at random. Um, it doesn't like that. Let's see if we hit, need to give it, if I messed up somehow. Um, I don't know why I'm doing this. I could very easily just print out uh, argc. Oh! Oh, that's not good. So, I don't know how that happened, but argv0 is the program name, and that's what's being printed out here. Um, and so what we really want is argv c to be 0, printf. You can be really clever here. Use percent %s and then use argv0. So well, however, the reason we do this instead of just calling it bc obscurations is people might want to compile this and output it with something different. I'm just using the convention that bcobscurations.c compiles to bcobscurations. It could very easily compile to anything else they wanted to. So this would be sort of much clearer to them that uh, you need to use the uh, the uh, argument uh, zero. And this time I'm going to um, that you need to use the arguments in front of whatever you've decided to call the program. All right, so let's see if we can uh, make this without any problems. And I'm really kind of getting sick of seeing all these error messages. So I'm beginning to think maybe uh, I should fix that. I'm not going to. I'm just thinking that I should. Okay. Whoa. Okay. Bin usage. No, of course not, because I screwed that up again. So this time, observer is one. That is gorgeous. So now we can, of course, just go and um, say spice car observer. And again, we are going to keep the horrible. Um, well, let's see. Um, I think we don't have to put the word object obscured and obscure ring. Uh, a little bit of a fact here for, and absolutely no one cares. Uh, in the VIC-20 days, uh, only the first two letters of a variable name were significant. So you couldn't do this in uh, basic 2.0 in the VIC-20, because these would be considered the same variable. I mean, there's a lot of other reasons you couldn't do it, because they didn't have, uh, you know, specific types and stuff. But, but that's just a, a, a fact that you probably don't give a rat's ass about. Okay. Again, I don't really know why I'm doing this, except to waste your time. Naturally, let's not print out the... Okay. So let's do this real quick. Um, 
Yeah. Now you probably asked me, uh, uh, shouldn't I be pushing this stuff to get every time it works? Unfortunately, the way I have my Git set up right now is it doesn't recognize this machine as a valid pusher. I can I can need to fix that. Um, but right now I can't push. Now you might say, well, how am I going to get back to good code if uh, I if I don't if I don't save in Git? And the answer to that question is uh, I'm going to look at the video. That's right. I do that too. Okay, usage up once again. All right, I'm getting really good at screwing this up. So one, two, three. Prams one, two, three. Okay, that's enough of uh, verification. Um. Let me go ahead and move this up here because we want to sort of comment a little bit differently. Yeah, that's gonna be. Check for correct number of arguments and assign two strings, which is not really what we're doing. We're assigning pointers to, but you know, it's like we're doing that. Okay, now uh, we now we need to determine frames for obscured and obscure. We do not for the observer. And here we can just now. Um, yeah, we're going to be a little bit careful here because, um, yeah, I think we're going to do. A, so people sort of vary on whether you do this. Uh, you know, some people say you should declare your variables right before you use them. I'm going to sort of declare the variables up here, except the ones I assign on the fly. Um, so. So we will, I mean, this is uh, FR code. Oh, actually, that's, that's not correct. Um, um, oh, we're actually still within our little frame finder thing. Um, and one, okay, so this is, um, we're going to need to fix this in just a second, but uh, that's fine. So... So for things we're not going to define right away, uh, like spice double t one, fr code. So that's going to be. <laughs> let's see. We're going to need frame codes for both. Yeah, now I'm beginning to regret my decision to. Um, that's not a spice. That's going to be a spice. Uh, let's see. I need to do that as like a. Spice char, the obscured frame, we're going to give it 32. Um, and this is a good place to use frame size. Eh, that's not a good name for it. Frame string, god damn it, stir length. And if we ever need to change it, we'll just change it over here. So we're going to create an obscured frame length of that. Then we are going to need an obscure ring. Doesn't that, the way I say that sounds great? Stir length. And we don't need one for the uh, for the observer. Um, and let's see, what are we using found for? Okay, and now we're going to cheat a little bit um, by not error checking. Uh, over here in this function where we determine the, uh, the frames, um, wherever the hell that is, Wherever I had my other negative exit, ne negative one. Yeah, here it is. Um, the found is going to tell us whether it's found, and the FR code output is going to tell us... I have no idea. Let's find out. I think it's going to just tell us the ID of the frame associated with the seat name. And I think that because it says that right here. We don't really need that. We actually don't need either FR code or found. We're going to assume that everything's going to be found, and we're going to assume we don't really care about the FR code, because we're going to be using the name for everything, because the functions we use use strings, not integers. So we can actually safely ignore that. And the, the result, the reason we need to know that is because over here, um, do, do we need a spice int somewhere? Did I screw that up? Um, FR code, FR name. Um, string length. So what is FR code? It's going to be... Um, FR code should be an integer. Why am I... 
Am I getting away with passing it to something other than an integer? Apparently I was. Apparently I had FR code passed as a... I'm surprised that worked. Oh, I'm sorry, maybe I didn't have it done that. Let's see. So do I have FR code defined anywhere? Cool! Let me just see if I had FR code defined somehow and I just lost it. Spice it! Okay, I did have it. I did have it defined. Um, so the, the upshot of all of what I was saying is basically we're going to use FR code and found uh, for both the obscuring object and the obscured object. Because we don't care about the values, we don't need to preserve them. And that's probably a bad decision on my part. So, um, in fact, it's such a bad decision, I'm going to actually not do it. So, just even though we don't really need it, we're going to say obscured code and obscure code. And obscured found, we won't be using this at all, obscured uh, obscure ring I found. Oh, god damn, this was a big mistake on my part. Okay, so we now determine the um, the printf here is kind of useless. We are going to do, let's see, yeah, we're going to try to put the furnishing right at the top here, because we need all these, uh, we need all these, uh, these uh, ephemeres, uh, these thingy doodles, ephemeres, but there's actually a better word, ephemerides, I think, is the plural. Um, so now we need to determine the, uh, let's go ahead and do this, not very hard here, so over here we're going to say the, um, observer, this will be the, uh, string length, and I feel something is weird here, yes it is, because we're not assigning these values, we're going to put them up here. And we won't need a found, because we have founds for each one. So here's where we just define our main variables. Here's where we define the variables that are just the argvs. And I probably will regret doing that, but OK. Um, I can't actually assign that until this point here, because I don't know if I have uh, at least three ar the four arguments that I need. OK, so we do that for the observer. String length f. <laughs> And no, we don't do this for the observer. Haha, -ha, I'm an idiot. Um, now we use one of Emacs magical split the screen features. Um, so what are we calling this? We're calling this, um, oh, we actually have it up here. So this is going to be the, doesn't matter which one we do first, obscured string length. And we're going to send it obscured code, the parameter to that. And then we're going to say, um, the uh, obscured frame, which I want to call almost obscured string, but whatever. And then I want to send it obscured found. And then the next one's going to be so similar, I'm going to cut and paste. That'll be obscuring, obscuring code. Obscure ring frame and obscure ring found. So now, once again, we can do an uh, exit minus one here to see if we've got these correct. Uh, let's see, obscured, and so we're going to just put in for obscured uh, percent. I think the only thing we really care about is obscured frame and obscure ring frame. We don't really need, um, as I said before. And am I supposed to pass in those as parameters? Uh, yes, I think I am. Yeah. Sorry, the booleans need to be passed as ampersands. The only thing that isn't is the string, because it's already a pointer. Um, um, boy, I'm probably going to regret using these really long variable names. All right, so the obscured, we're just going to say, is going to be obscured frame. And obscuring is going to be the obscuring so if now if this works, I'll be really surprised, and if I had a way to back this up, I would. Uh, actually, probably should anyway, but whatever. Oh, so I'm using found. Oh, you know what? Because I didn't clean up my garbage here. Um, so, and even though this code doesn't run, um, 
it still gets checked for it still gets comp when it gets compiled it still does some checking here so here we're getting the parameters we're not going to keep printing them that's only temporary uh, and now let's see if this works oh string length undeclared well because I called it stir length that's why and that's probably going to actually help me out here and make this short enough to yay one line no not one line oh well okay by the way if you're one of those people saying you know back in my day we couldn't uh, keep tweaking programs and we compiling them that compiling took forever I used to be in that situation too so I'm not uh, not uh now this would be interesting because um one two and three are all objects um nice 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 okay so now we can go back over here by the way the um the test we're going to run is for a solar eclipse but it actually might not work because just because there's a place on earth where um um, a planet or the moon passes in front of the sun doesn't mean that it happens at the geocenter even as an annular eclipse. It's quite possible that the entire ray of the eclipse uh, misses the center of the Earth. Um, but that, but if we do find something, it will definitely be an eclipse. But if we don't find something, it doesn't mean there's not an eclipse. So it's a, it's a one-way test. So let's uh, go ahead and do this. We're still going to put in some printfs here. Okay, well, I'm going to cheat here, actually. I'm very, very concerned. I do have a program called uh, BC Quickback, which doesn't, you don't need to use it if this was, this is, um, because this is GitHub. But since it's not really GitHub, it can do this, and it's probably going to complain that, yep. Um, user, local, etc. Quickback. That's, you need that. Oh, good, I need to put it in my, whoa, okay. Good. Um, by the way, the password is ABC123. That doesn't doesn't help you at all to know that. Okay, so let's go back here to BC Quickback. Cannot create... Mm, BC Quickback is supposed to be able to create subdirectories. Aha! But only if it actually owns stuff. Um... And so once you have this, the quick back should be very, very easy. And I meant to say ls minus ld, because I want to see the status. I don't want to see what's in the directory. I want to see something about the directory. Uh, and I think that's fine. The owner is user of the group is root, which doesn't really do anything. Uh, so now let's go ahead and see if we can quick back. Oh, I don't have that alias set up here. Usually I alias quick back to be uh, bc quick back. Uh, you've got to be kidding me. Permission denied. Hmm. Hmm. You see, Quickback is supposed to be using frickin' make dir minus p. So take a brief second to see why the hell it's breaking. Um, hmm. Unless I actually ended up doing it and just being whiny about me not doing it. Oh. Pat that, it's all there. Um, groovy. Alright, so now that these backed up, we can uh, do whatever the hell it is I was doing before this, and I don't think we're going to need to tweak this program so we can get rid of it. Okay, um, obscured, obscuring frame. Um, wow. I, I'm sort of lost, but I think we're okay. Oh, and actually, there's two other things you want to be able to people to give here. Um, 
the starting year and the ending year. Um, so we're going to explain how to do this in here in a minute because we don't want to have to change the code every time we want to run it for a different, uh, a different time period. So we do want to let people sort of put that in there. Uh, which of course changes all of this, not all of this. Um, the starting year and the uh, ending year will be spice doubles. We actually do need that. And that means our code will need six. And we need to say here, and that's not as useful as it should be, but you know, whatever. Okay. And then over here we will have spice double s here equals now we can't just say argv4 because that's a that's a um a mama um and we could actually um and we have to convert it to float at some point and i'll explain why in just a sec but we don't have to do it here but i think that's how i do it in my other programs uh so it's just a2f argv4 spice double ending year equals a2f arg five and because of the way I'm doing this, if you actually want the year 2019, you have to make the end year 2020. Otherwise, it assumes 2019 to 2019 is zero amount of time. Uh, again, it's, again, you probably don't care. And let's see here. So let's just be sort of clever here and see if we can print these out as, as doubles. Okay, so now the question is... Again, we're going to get rid of a lot of these printfs. They're just here for debugging purposes. So now the question is, how do we compute, if we have the s year and the e year, how do we compute the, uh, the ephemeris time, which is what we, what we actually need? Well, that's another function I've written in this hideous library of mine. It's not very complicated. Um, and I think it's called et to year, or year to, there it is. And all this basically does is it assumes there are you know thirty one million five hundred fifty six nine hundred fifty two seconds in a year, which is a pretty good approximation. Um, and then uh, let's see. Oh, and and it does do one other bit of checking here, uh, and so then just uh, you know subtracts from the year two thousand, multiplies by that, which gives you roughly the number of seconds since the year two thousand. It does one other nice little check here. You'll notice that if it's bigger than e time or s time, it'll just return you know the max of those values it'll bound it between s time and e time um, ah. okay and what are s time and e time well s time and e time are these numbers uh, these are the numbers that are limitations of de431 um, and they pretty much go from 15,000 years to go to 15,000 years from now um, and basically if you want to convert beyond those times Certainly I could do it without having to, to minimize or maximize, but it's not going to be helpful because there's nothing that NASA gives us that covers that amount of time. If you do want to cover that time beyond 15,000 years, there are other ways of doing it. There are, in fact, uh, um, boy, I can't remember it now. Uh, the, um, there's a sine wave functions that the VSOP, VSOP, those, those will do uh, calculations beyond that. Uh, and the, the accuracy drops off in VSOP, but here, of course, it just gets cut off. Um, so, so that's what we want to do here. We want the uh, ear to ET function. And find and start and end ephemeris times. And I don't think this is a problem here. I should be able to just say... I don't think it's a problem overwriting a variable in C. Either. Okay, I don't think we need to exit anymore. Uh, we do not need. And these things we should, these are, you know, th these are effectively creating empty variables. So we will put them up here in the uh, creating empty variable thing. And maybe we should put this comment where it belongs. Check for correct number of arguments and assign to strings. Good. The print job we'll just put here. Um, I'll leave the furnish here. It's not going to really matter, though. Uh, we find the uh, the frames and we print them, which we don't need to do. Um, T1 and T2 we don't need anymore because we're going to replace them. The window we're going to create will go from S here to e ear, 
and we will put it in the, in the window called CN Fine. And then, for right now, we're still looking for any, but that might change. So now I've got to be really careful. Now let's see what we said here. Uh, in our original example, we said Jupiter was eclipsing the sun as viewed from Io. So let's make sure we get these all correct. So Jupiter is the obscure, um, is the obscuring object. It is, in other words, we need to put it the, um, okay, what's that going to be? It's just going to be one of the, oh, that's, sorry, that's, that's going to be in the args here. Uh, so that is going to be the obscure ring, not the obscured. The thing that is doing the obscuring will be Jupiter. Everything is an ellipsoid. The frame we want here is the obscured frame, I believe. I hope I got that right. Uh, the thing being obscured, the observer, that's just... That's kind of weird that it's here. No, I'm sorry. Sorry, 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 sorry. 10 is the sun. It's what's being... See, 10 and IO, they're basically the same thing. If you I is 1 and O is 0, that's really confusing, I just realized. But no, 10 is the sun. It's the thing being obscured. So it's the um, obscured. It's also an ellipsoid. Everything's going to be an ellipsoid. And its frame is going to be the obscured frame. But I've made a mistake here. This will, of course, be the obscure ring frame. But we can still do the XCN. That's whatever we want it to be. I think we can actually change this number to be 1. Um, do I want to? I'll do that for right now. We might have to bump it up. And this one is just the observer. Okay. And then we create, we look at how big the result window is. Hopefully not big, too big that it will crash our system. Uh, and then we basically print out the very ugly version of, of the results. So now if this still works, I will be freaking impressed with myself. And hell, if it compiles, I'll be freaking... Um, yeah. T1 and T2 are unused variables because, of course, um, did I, or did I, am I still using T1 and T2 somewhere? I mean, those were the ones, T1, aha, we don't need those anymore. Uh, we have replaced them with S year and Y year, down here. And I don't know why that's a fatal error, but I think maybe it's just for, like, safety or something. Beautiful. Okay, now... Uh, this time I'm doing this on purpose. Oh, 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 it does not like that. Um... Wow, and wow, those are environment variables, how cool. So apparently I didn't do the check early enough, so let's make sure we do this here. The variables we will use... Oh, yeah. And if that <laughs> happens, we should probably exit the program and sort of keep, you know, keep going. Alright, so let's do that again. Uh, I'm going to pretend that worked. And this time I'm intentionally not giving it the what I want, because I want to... I want to know... I want to know what the... Uh okay, so let's... Let's be wacky here and see if we can do it from Earth. Um, 301, the obscured object will be the Sun. Um, and the obscurer will be, I'm sorry, Earth is 399. Um, 10 is the Sun and three <coughs> excuse me, 301 will be the Moon. So this will be basically, if it worked, which it won't, a list, kind of a list of solar eclipses uh, for this year. But let's, I don't think it's going to work, but let's find out. Yes, IAU 301 is not recognized. So that's uh, fascinating there. Um, 301 is the Earth's moon. And I'm going to cheat a little bit here. Because in theory, I could just say Earth, Sun, Moon. That sounds like one of those like kids' things. Whoa! That wasn't supposed to work. Um, 
Okay, taking longer than I wanted to take, which might be because I decided to do the one second time step. Um, let's give it another 10 seconds. And if that doesn't work, we will... Um, uh, let's go ahead and kill this. All right, let's go ahead and make the, the tolerance step um, 3600 again. I need to figure out what this needs to be. This can, this maybe we have to decide on the fly. So let's go ahead and remake. Now it kind of bugs me that there's an IAU moon and not um, and not an IAU 301. That's just kind of weird. And of course I meant to say DN because I need to add bin to my path. Okay. I will be observing from Earth. Um, I want the sun to be obscured and I want the moon to be obscuring it from 2019 to 2020. Not bad, actually. So, if this is correct, this will be the time, nearly the time, of a solar eclipse. How lazy am I? No, oh, this lazy, apparently. So the question is, do we have a solar eclipse on December 26th of this year? Um, that's not the only solar eclipse this year, so it kind of bugs me, but uh, let's find out. I don't know. Um, not a bit, and we can probably overwrite some of this stuff. So solar eclipses for 2019. Yay. So right there, um, December 26th. Um, 436, I don't know if it's going to be that accurate because, again, we, we're we looking at the center of the Earth as opposed to the uh, to a observer on the Earth. Mm. Oh, sorry, these are... These are other eclipses. We're scrolling down to the one that's in December. Here we go. Um... Da, 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 0519 uh, TD, which I think is... Uh, I don't know what that is. I think that's... Um, that's uh, universal time, isn't it? Oh, that's the set. The TD is the middle of it when it happened. The middle is going to be 519. Okay. Um, northeast at 343 in UT, and I think we had something very close to that. Uh, 436, not, so not so much. 436 is, um, okay. All right, so, so we see that this code is now, gives you arbitrary obscurations incorrectly. That's not great. Um, let me look at the obscuration functions to see if we can find out, because we're looking at any obscuration, but again, it is any obscuration of a, um, of a, of a geometric point in the center of the Earth where only the hobbits live and they really aren't that interested in eclipses, except for, of course, uh, you know, annular eclipses, because then you see the ring. But aside from that, they're not really that interested. So let's see if we can find um, we can find a better function here: occultation event, find occult. So these are the this is one of the functions we used before. Find occultation type, and that might be important to us but not at the very moment. So let's see if what's occultation event is. I don't know how interesting this will be. Uh, well, you know it's interesting when it's got like 10,000 parameters. When an observer sees one target occulted by another, report progress and handles interrupts if so commanded. The surfaces of the target bodies may be represented by triaxial ellipsoids or by topographical data provided by DSK files. Um, so a lot of this is the same type of occultation, which will be any for our case. Name of the body occulting the other. Uh, front body, body fixed for, you know, for the front body. Name of body occulted. Name of observing body. Um, and what I'm looking for here, yeah, unfortunately what I'm not seeing here uh, is an, where the observer is just going to be, a, again, a geometric point, and I think they're going to say that here. Uh, 
is the name of the body from which the occultation of the name ID code or the body as a string. And again, the problem here is I think I think the issue here is going to be it's still considering the geocentric, not the topographical view, because that would be actually a lot harder. So, so we're not going to get all the eclipses, sadly. Uh, everything we get should be an eclipse, though. So let's do a little bit better than that. So why don't we uh, say, you know, um, why don't we give all the ones until the year 2029? Not bad again. And for testing, we're just going to use uh, this one. I wonder if this will... Yeah, well, cool. Um, let's see if there's one on April 20th, 2023. Um, so we'll just say solar eclipses for 2023. Oh, dear. And I think we said it's going to be on uh, April 20th. So there might be other, there should be more than one in a given year. Apparently this is, the, there it is. So, there's a lot more to eclipses than what we're doing here. Uh, this is just a very trivial sort of look uh, to answer that uh, Jovian moon question. Um, so, so this is the eclipse where the, uh, the center line of the obscuration uh, goes through the center of the Earth. So if you were at the center of the Earth, you would see probably an annular eclipse, assuming you could see through the Earth. Um, but uh, the problem with partial eclipses is it's quite possible that the central part of the eclipse misses the center of the Earth entirely. Can we do something about that? The answer is yes, we can, although it gets really kind of ugly. And what we, we have to do there is we have to basically take the, uh, the point, the topographical point we're at, and move it towards uh, the line that connects the obscured and obscuring object's centers, I think. Um, or we could use, like, topographical... Um, you know, it's actually a good question. I don't really know how we could do this um, well for, uh, for an entire planet. We could just take lots of locations at a planet uh, and hope that the eclipse hits somewhere within that, but, uh, you know... That's not, uh, that's not, um, that's not necessarily going to work. Okay, enough of that. So now let's go back and see if we can actually answer the question, which is, um, I keep forgetting what the order is, but that's okay, because I actually have it, they have it telling me. Um, the observer, oh, do I want to say IO? No, I'm going to say 501. The obscured object is the Sun 10, and the obscure ring object is Jupiter 599. And we're going to go from 2019 to... Whoa! Okay. I'm getting kind of annoyed here, but apparently... Why the hell isn't it? There should be a way to fix that. I'm going to make a note, actually, outside of this. Um, and hopefully this won't kill my recording, but I have to go to Pablo Control. That's the uh, Pulse Audio Control. Um... Why is there, and you can't see this, I'm typing it on another place, uh, an IAU Jupiter, but not an IAU 59. That is true, and to be honest, it should actually figure out that 599 is Jupiter. That's not a hard thing to know. Um, all right, so Io, the Sun, Jupiter, which you can do lowercase. Oh, come on. The only reason I want to put Io is because there's more than one thing called Io, but the Sun, Jupiter, they're, they're pretty solid. And there we go, quite a few of those suckers. Uh, now, of course, if we really wanted to do this, we first of all, we, we shouldn't be printing in ephemeris time, or I guess this is Unix time, but even then, that's not great. We, want it, we would want to print something a little bit nicer than that. Um, but let's let's also now um, we're going to look for like a special strange case here, and if I can get around to doing that,
Now I'm going to just pipe that to DevNobs. I just want to get the command back. <laughs> okay. So here's where it gets kind of wacky. Um, we still want IO to be the observer, the sun to be the thing that's going to be eclipsed, but can IO be eclipsed by one of Jupiter's other moons? Um, instead of by Jupiter itself, is it possible that, you know, you see a transit or whatever of Ganymede from IO, and that transit, if it's big, cast a big enough shadow, obscures IO itself. That is a truly bizarre kind of thing we're going to do. It's hard enough to say. Let's see if that happens. Okay, now IAU 502, that's getting pretty wacky. How is 501 supported and not 502? I mean, seriously? Okay, I'm going to have to complain that one I'm going to have to look at. But I guess what we can just call this Ganymede. I don't know if no Ganymede is 502, but it's definitely one of the other four moons. Okay, nothing. Um, let's see if Callisto does that. Nope. At least not within the time frame we're giving. It might, might happen some other time. Uh, let's see if Europa, the only other remaining moon, does that. No. Um, all right, we're not done yet. Um, Io sees the sun blocked by... Yeah, let's get really crazy here. In theory, uh, Mars could be blocking the sun as viewed from Io. Uh, it's going to be a, a transit, obviously, not, a, not an eclipse, but... Oh, 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 oh. Oh. Fudge. Yeah, the problem here is... Um, if I just want to use the Mars Berry Center, which is like 10 inches from uh, the Mars Center itself, I actually would have to load in some Mars uh, parameters as well, some Mars uh, ephemerides as well. And I'm not sure I want to do that, but um, let's go ahead and um, see if it happens with Earth. No. Okay. Well, I'm getting a little bit bored by doing this with such short periods of time, so let's go ahead and really crank it up. And I'm hoping in this case it will understand Io. Sees the sun blocked by Ganymede between 1900 and 2100. It's take like a few seconds to run. Okay. Because even finding one of these will be pretty cool, actually. Um, the only thing that bugs me is I hope it, it thinks of Io as what I'm thinking of Io as the, uh, the first moon of Jupiter. Well, I'm going to bother doing this. I'm going to Google IAU underscore 502 because I know somebody has got to have complained about this before. Wow. Wow! Okay, why the frick is there an IAU 501 then? Oh. Apparently I just got lucky on that one. Oh wow, so uh, assuming this is all correct, of course, it looks like... Um, Ganymede transits, occults, or eclipses the sun many, many times between these two years. Let's just use this one here. And so one of what the hell? Oh fuck, these are Unix times, aren't they? Ha ha. I was I thought they were um ephemeris time, so I was going for something just after the year two thousand. And I think this will actually do that. Not exactly, but close. Uh all right, May seventeenth, two thousand three. So we get to run our favorite program, which I think I stopped earlier because it was taking up too many resources. Um and I need to run it, unfortunately, not... Oh, there we are. Yeah, not full screen. All right, so uh, we are saying we're going to look from I.O. Are we on I.O.? Where are we? We should be on I.O. No, we're not. I didn't save that location. But I did save... Um, 
I have one in France. This is actually on IO Force. Um, we will now change the date to be 2003. Um, and what 2003? Boy, that was uninteresting. Um, 2003, May 17 ish. I mean, we should be able to see it, you know, pretty much. Um, and da 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 We'll do, uh, we'll do 17. So now we need to find out where Ganymede is. And if we're correct, it's sort of close to the sun. Okay. And where is Mr. Sun? Here comes Mr. Sun. That's nowhere near, uh, nowhere near the sun. So that's, that's not cool. Uh, the only thing I'm thinking is maybe it misunderstood what I meant by I.O. But hey, let's see what happens. Maybe it is that this thing moves so fast that uh, within a few uh, few hours it'll it'll. And it certainly doesn't look like that. I mean, the sun is slowly creeping up on it. Um. Oh wow, this is an other interesting problem. It looks like if we go ahead a couple hours. Let me recenter here. Ganymede's actually going to be itself eclipsed by Jupiter. So this is a case we didn't consider uh, that, yes, Ganymede is in front of the Sun, but it doesn't matter because Jupiter's in front of both of them. So again, this is a little bit of an ugly situation here. Let's see if we can... Uh, we, can we can't fix it, but I mean, let's see if Ganymede happens to unoccult by the time... Um, by the time Ganymede... Okay. Hey, there it is. Awesome. So now... Solar Eclipse on Io. And then you can see from the size of Ganymede, it's going to be a transit of Ganymede. Now, one thing I'm curious about is what time we said it was going to happen. Um, see how accurate we are there. We said 1657, so you know what? We have a shot at getting this right. We still have five hours to go. And I'm just going to go minute by minute to, to annoy people. So 1657 is when presumably the... I'm going to go ahead and focus on Ganymede. The sun is going to be transited by Ganymede on Io. And I don't think it's going to be a big deal because the angular width of Ganymede is too small, which is, by the way, might prevent any other uh, moons from eclipsing uh, Io as well, uh, from eclipsing the sun as well, sort of just barely obscuring it. Well, it looks like our timing is going to be pretty good here. Um, I'm tempted to zoom in. Now, by the way, the, uh, the ground on uh, Io does not look like this. This is a uh, this is a landscape chosen by uh, Stellarium for Earth. Uh, but maybe it will one day. We could terraform. Okay, we might have another problem here, and that is the transit will occur at sunset. We can always move where we are. Okay, now I'm going to see if we can always really zoom this sucker in. Because we said 1637, and we're really, really close to that now. It looks like we're going to be pretty much dead on time here. Not quite. We're a little bit off. But pretty darn close. Okay, now that that's that's weird. So <laughs> that should I don't think that should have happened. Holy crap. Okay, I'm wrong. Apparently Ganymede is huge, it just wasn't showing as being huge earlier. So Okay, so here we go, Ganymede sneaking up on the sun, uh, as viewed from Io. And as it hits the sun, eclipse, eclipse, eclipse. Hey, guess what? Io gets totally dark. Or at least the part of Io we're on gets totally dark, and Ganymede looks big enough to actually make the whole planet dark. So, now, if we go to Jupiter and look at Io, we will see Io in lunar eclipse as observed from Jupiter. That is like the most interesting th thing I've done in my freaking life sadly um, so let's go to the planet Jupiter I don't think I have anything saved from Jupiter and now let's zoom out a little bit oh. and now let's look at Io from this location um, and once again this aisle. 
not terribly exciting because it's under the uh, under the uh, horizon right now. Um, we could fix this uh, by just advancing the by uh, advancing the latitude or longitude. It's going to be easier though, however, if we just remove the horizon. And I think there is a, a feature. Oh shit! Do I have this? Sorry. I have the bottom of this thing off the edge of. Um, and there's a way to get rid of the. No, I'm, well, there is no atmosphere on Jupiter. It's totally dead there. Um, planet labels. Night mode. Ground. We can get rid of the ground. Okay. So now, um, let's see what this is. So this is Io. Oh, that is gorgeous. Io in partial eclipse because of Ganymede. You cannot make this stuff up. Well, you could. Now let's see if this is actually a cause of the eclipse. I keep forgetting to set my time to pause because we don't really want time passing. So let's see what this does. So this, um, that's just spicer, not very interesting. So here we are. Io is this might actually not be something that Stellarium covers. So here we are. Io is nice and bright. So as we advance the minutes, spinny Io, cool. In theory, we should see Io get dark as Ganymede eclipses it, but I don't know if, um, and begin, again, it might just be the magnitude will change, but I don't know if Stellarium models that. So, thanks to this wonderful question, we have found a potential issue with, oh, hello. That's weird. So actually, the good question is, where is Ganymede now? I mean, Gan well, Ganymede is going to be actually on the opposite side of Jupiter because it's, um, well, actually, it's a damn good question. Ganymede, yeah, might actually be nowhere near where we are. So it looks like, um, it looks like we found the issue that if you have one moon of Jupiter casting a shadow on another moon of Jupiter, it we won't know it, this program won't notice it, and I probably need to um, let me let's get go ahead and get, make sure that's true. Okay, so here we are. According to this, on IO, we're fixed time. I'm going to keep the time fixed. Uh, if you're on IO right over here, um, if you're on Jupiter rather, IO does not appear eclipsed. However, if you go to same time, no changes. Go to IO. Um, something's wrong. Let's look for the sun. Okay. I think this thing here is Ganymede. It is. So the question is, what the hell am I doing? So let's go ahead and make sure there's a time when we actually have... What's weird here is Ganymede's like tiny. It looks like it's tiny, but the moment of eclipse begins. I want to focus on the freaking sun, dude. Oh wow, is this like a not, not a bug necessarily, but um. Okay, not interesting. We should have seen the sun be eclipsed by now. Wow. This might be another bug here in, uh, we were discovering here wonderfully on, uh, come on, it's where I'm going to need. All right, maybe I screwed something up here, but I could have sworn we had an eclipse going. I'm sorry, the time was 1637, that's why I messed up, I jumped ahead two hours. Okay, so here we go, here we go. Here we go. Okay. And now, I kind of want to get a, like a second where it's like just... This, so let's go ahead and really zoom in here. 
on the sun, or Ganymede, either one. So this is what it should be like. So this is um, Ganymede, this is the sun. Io is being eclipsed, but not quite, so let's go ahead and go to 1710. Sorry, 1708. There is a total eclipse of the... Ooh, holy crap! Okay, hang on. This is a very short eclipse, apparently. So here we go, we are at 1705.18. One second at a time. First contact, 29 seconds. 529. Uh, within a minute and a, um, between about two minutes later, well, two minutes, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Full coverage. 744, and then, very, very quickly, yeah, less than a minute this eclipse lasts, which I guess is reasonable, because eclipses don't really last that long. Okay, so we have to be very careful, though, if we're going to try to try to see that um, Stellarium maps this effect correctly. So here we are, Io is now in total darkness. Um, at least where we are. I wonder if that's just... No, it's all also dark here. Although perhaps for a different reason. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Wow. That is funky. Um, I, uh, Ganymede is eclipsing the sun depending on where you are on Io, even though it's so freaking huge. So... I I don't know if we can actually get we can actually get something out of this. So now it's full eclipse here, but not necessarily a full eclipse everywhere on Io. Nonetheless, now let's see if we look at Io from Jupiter, uh, whether we can see the Ganymede obscuration causing a shadow to fall over Io. I, and if we do, I'll be very surprised. So let's go ahead and go to uh, Jupiter. Probably need to save a location on Jupiter at some point. And oh, these are alphabetical order. Wow. That's helpful. And before I forget, let me just say, call this location Jupiter 1. And add it to the list. Okay. Fantastic. We can, don't need this anymore. Uh, that's fine. We need to find out where Io is. Whoa. Big freaking piece of crap. Because um, I did... And honestly, I do not think um, that is reflective of the eclipse cause. I don't think we're seeing the shadow of Ganymede uh, on Io. Um, we can move this around a little bit to see if that... No, we're going to center on Io. Stay centered on Io. Okay, we can move this around a bit. I do not see the shadow of Ganymede passing over Io. So this appears to be something that is not being modeled. Uh, by uh, by Stellarium, and you can't quite see the magnitude now because we have uh, kind of kind of bad coloring there, but it is 9.64, 9.63, uh, and I think any change in the magnitude is due to the solar angle, uh, not because of Ganymede's eclipse of Io. So there you have it. Um, apparently correct. But the actual details are going to be much, much more complicated. Um, we can figure them out, actually. And I think we have to do one, maybe one other step here. Uh, 958, 957. I'm looking for, like, a major increase and in actually seeing Ganymede's shadow on Io, uh, which would be awesome. But I do not think... It says extincted, too, but, I mean, Jupiter doesn't have an atmosphere, so that's not... Why are you... <laughs> Maybe Jupiter does have an atmosphere. But, you know, who knows. So anyway, we're not going to see... Um, oh, because of the sun. Solar glare. And, you know, we pretend like... So anyway, um... So really, if we were to look... Draw a line between Io and Ganymede, I think it would hit the sun. I don't really know right now. Um... But anyway... So what we've discovered here is we have some clue about how to measure obscurations. doesn't really answer the question uh, asked by the uh, Stack Exchange uh, person, 
which is good because I really don't like them. I don't even know who they are, and I don't like them. But um, but it does show you how you can use sea spice to get s some idea of how this happens. And clearly, if it is Jupiter doing the obscuring, we actually have a pretty good idea of how this works because that Stellarium does map that, and we do see that uh, Jupiter is big enough to totally blank out the Sun on Io. Although I'm guessing at some point we're gonna uh, we're gonna some point we're gonna realize that actually doesn't necessarily happen all the way. Um, penumbras, umbras, all that good stuff. Um, but for the moment, I think this is what we have one other thing we can do, and I'm gonna go ahead and quit out of Stellarium because it is kind of a it's in a VM and it's it's a hog. So let's go back over here. So we're really happy with this. I'm gonna do a quick quick back of all this stuff. Yay! <laughs> Worked this time. I was all happy this time. Okay, now the one other function we found about obscurations uh, was uh, Occultation event, find occultation. Find occultation type at time. So this might be sort of useful. Not occulted, partially, etc. of the ob one target relative to another target is seen by an observer at a given time. This is again very simple. It's just basically going to tell us whether we have a partial eclipse. But again, the problem here is the observer is a single point, not a body. I think. Let's, let's check this out. Um, See the description of Targ 1 above, and I d again don't think this is going to be very interesting. Is the name of the first target body, both object names, and for example, both Moon and 301. Um, let's see. Of one target. The surfaces of the target. Well, actually, this might do what we want. Um, of one target relative to another target is seen by an observer at a given time. Surfaces, I think, unfortunately, both target bodies are neither of those are the actual observer. Both of those are actually the bodies that are blocking each other. The observer is OBS RVR here. Um, and I, again, I'm pretty sure they're not going to be using the, uh, they're going to be using the geocenter, not the, uh, uh, no, sorry, not the geocenter, the observer's center, not the, uh, not the uh, actual, not a topographical location on the observer. And I'm sort of surprised they don't have more about that, because that just seems like a thing to be sort of nice to add. Um, and this, this is actually sort of unusual, because usually it's not possible to have two things that can occult each other, because one of them is going to be closer to than the other. Um, and I'm going to look through this a little bit more, but I'm pretty sure that the observer is considered to be a point, not a planet. Um, yeah. Let's see if we can find anything else here that might be interesting. We'll say eclipse and stuff. Yeah, unfortunately there's no eclipse. Um, I don't think obscuration was finding anything. Occult. Um, is target in FOV? Yeah, this is this is going to get difficult. To basically, if we want to see whether any portion of a target is going to be eclipsed, that's going to be a little bit different than finding out whether the center of the target is eclipsed. Okay, I think this has been a fairly short stream, but let me check here. It has been dun dun, dun oh my god, one and a half hours. What the hell am I doing with my life? Anyway. One and a half hours is more than enough time, so I'm going to go ahead and stop the stream. Thank you for watching, uh, and talk to you later.